G'day, I'm Ash. Hope you're all doing fantastically well. Welcome yourselves back to War Thunder. And yeah, I know, another tank gameplay video. But more importantly, it's a discussion about why I'm not necessarily playing aircraft as much anymore. And there is a very distinct reason for that. Many of the other content creators have previously moved their content over, maybe 2015, 2016, 2017. They've transferred from aviation-related stuff to ground forces. And I'm now at the end of every single tech tree in terms of aircraft. And I'm only playing select things every now and then. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but uh, we're reaching 50,000 subscribers. I'm mainly known for aircraft, and I'm not investing a lot of time, you know, playing those vehicles. I'm not investing a lot of time spading them. I'm really enjoying the FJ, uh, e e the Japanese Phantom, the Kai. That thing's fantastic, but I'm really sort of struggling. Eight years, War Thunder, uh, and there hasn't really been any sizable change aside from Supersonics to that of, well, the mainstream gameplay itself. Now, while I do enjoy top tier, uh, middle tier and low tier aircraft tend to be a bit more of a drab. There's only so many times you can climb and side climb and, uh, you know, gain a bunch of altitude towards, you know, intercepting other aircraft before it gets really old. Probably played... Oh, too many hours in this game uh, to really count. I think I'm up to about, oh, maybe 7,000 hours, maybe, if I was to do uh, the correct math. But uh, total number of logins, according to Mike, thanks for giving me this information, is about 6,700. So, uh, I, I play this game quite a bit, and I don't think I'm improving all that well. Mind you, my interest is dwaning in, in aircraft anyway. Aside from top tier, there isn't really much else to really do. And I don't really enjoy the greater scheme of top tier. I'm not really a, a jet player. I like the 1950s jets and the 1960s stuff. That's fantastic. But as soon as you get into sort of a higher tier stuff, it tends to ruin my appetite for, I guess, playing a lot of low tier stuff. And War Thunder's core drive is that you grind out as fast as you can or as quickly as you can to get that next vehicle, to get, you know, that next set of progression going. So, is it a gameplay issue or is it actually a sort of game mode issue? Because on one hand, it is quite nice to have a slow pace to learn how to fly an aircraft effectively. Climbing, boom and zooming, uh, dogfighting, turn fighting, all of that is fantastic. But when half your team ends up by head-on uh, killing you or doing something stupid or running away and extending the match in a bomber just because their bomber models are fragile as all hell, is that really, you know, gameplay or is that just team deathmatch in a nutshell? Because the game's core focus has been you take off, you fly and you fight against enemy aircraft. It hasn't been you go escort a couple of bombers and then they drop a couple of bombs and they bleed the tickets and you win the match. I know it happens, I've seen it happen over the many years, but essentially that kind of gameplay, that, that sort of prerogative to not only just be you know, a cohesive team and, and, and have decent teamwork is out the window, which is why I like showcasing you know, strange matches or things that have happened in a match where something unique may have happened because you never know what you're going to get with War Thunder. It's the arcade simulation and that's what I like about it. It gives you enough realism, but also gives you enough sort of pain and grief because you're playing a version of this vehicle represented visually. You don't actually have to learn auxiliary power units and, and how to operate your weapon systems and how to launch a, a, a rocket or a missile or, you know, <laughs> all those kind of other interesting things which DCS does. On the other hand, you don't really have to learn how to actually fly an aircraft for a long period of time. Flying an aircraft actually can be quite fatiguing, especially if you're flying a World War II prop. There's no hydraulic assists. There's sometimes just, for a lack of a word, uh, a, a less mechanics to really play with there. And while the flying might be more uh, realistic, it is a little bit draining having to keybind and keymap and do everything else like that. So while DCS Isle 2 and other simulation games provide a lot of that, that core flight aspect, I'm glad War Thunder exists because it's a casual experience. But when that casual existence and, and then that experience becomes a bit of a drain, well, what do you do? You look for something else to do. And what have I been doing? ground forces. I don't know if it's just me, but I find playing low tier aircraft a bit of a pain. You have to side climb, or you have to climb off the side of the map, or sometimes you don't even do that, you just fly directly out, particularly when you're in biplanes or so on and so forth. 
even doing that, you've got you know, a five to six minute trajectory, and then you've got maybe two to three minutes of combat before you turn back around, you land, you rearm, or alternately you stay flying around for those last couple of kills, and then the game ends. There isn't really any point to escorting fighters, there isn't really any point to really playing at all. And while I'd, I'd love there to be an enduring confrontation realistic, it doesn't pop up very often. Gaussian Entertainment doesn't really sort of experiment with air anymore, it seems to be all focused on ground, and well, they're really trying to push out naval as much as they can, but naval somehow has the same problems that air does in that gameplay can be stale. It's why we gravitate to vehicles such as the BV-138, or maybe some of the rarer float planes and just have a bunch of fun, you know, land in the middle of a lake and shoot down aircraft for example. Or maybe you fly a bomber as a heavy fighter and you go after other bombers and then you go after a couple of other fighters. Or you can even do other things. The standard aircraft uh, either side of each map with an airfield either side of each map and four bombing points and a couple of ground forces in between, at least grain units you can destroy, isn't really a viable concept. People just side climb, they intercept each other at about 3,000 metres, they dogfight, they go all the way down to the deck, and then, well, that's basically whoever comes out on top wins that particular engagement. But that could take 6 to 12 minutes to play out here. I'm not saying it's bad, but something needs to change in terms of uh, gameplay. Ultimately, it comes down to game modes, doesn't it? I'd love to play, you know, Enduring Confrontation on the weekends when people have more time and more availability. Maybe you should introduce a system where players get pushed into an enduring confrontation battle and then they can have a lineup of vehicles like we do in realistic battles for ground forces. That way you could provide, you know, a series of, of, you know, gameplay benefits and spawn points and so on and so forth and let the match play out like a regular sort of ground forces match but extend the time allocation. Maybe you say it's 25 minutes and then you've got to fight and claim and do all sorts of things. I don't know, there's plenty of solutions out there. Another thing, stop using such linear maps. It's kind of annoying. I'd like a diversity of Grand Forces maps, or a diversity of diff different types of assets that spawn in. Maybe you have some dams, or maybe you have uh, some boats that need to be destroyed, and just filter it. Have the same map with different objectives. Maybe the runways are swept around, or maybe you have to capture an airfield in realistic battles, right? Who wouldn't love just going after that and, and sort of, you know, trying their hand at, at playing some of these kind of ideas? It's been put out there, you know, you can't just bomb bases and, and factories, right, all the time on those, those big circly dots that bombers like to go after. You know, fighters and teamwork cohesively need something objectively to do, aside from just going head on with one another or climbing to space, etc, etc. And I love aviation, it's my passion. I qualified as a licensed aircraft maintenance engineer back in 2016. I plan on continuing aviation as my core, but I'm getting tired of it. So, experimenting with different game modes would probably be better. Experimenting with some of the events, maybe if they have them at all, that'd be fantastic as well, but... It needs to do something. You know, I'm going on eight years, the game hasn't really changed a great deal outside of adding the supersonic stuff. When the F-100 and the MiG-19 came along, everyone was like, great, fantastic, beautiful, the game felt new and fresh and wonderful. Because at that time, it was just Sabres versus MiG-17s, etc, etc. And unfortunately, with the, the amount of vehicles we have in the game, balancing an economy to really suit a different game mode is entirely impractical within the realms of, I guess, making it accessible for more and more players. And maybe that means experimenting with an idea to split the tech trees up. You've already got rank 5 premiums for aircraft and for tanks. Why not separate the tech trees into sort of levels so you can start off for fresh instead of having to grind through all the rank 1s to 4s. Some people aren't interested in the World War II content and rather just play jets. So I have to grind through absolutely everything. I get that's part of the economy model, but if you've already set a baseline there, with the $60 premiums, why not extend that? And where we're going with War Thunder's future, A-10, F-14, you know, all those Russian jets and so on and so forth, it begs the question, what's really next? There are plenty of solutions to this very, very issue. You know, unfortunately, it being a little bit stale doesn't have an effect on your input at all. I'd love to know what you think in the comments down below. Am I being nonsensical or am I just being a jaded bastard who needs to take a break? Probably the latter there. More importantly, I see War Thunder's future uh, in, in a bit of disarray. You know, they've been comfortable and quite comfortable sitting there on the market for a very long time, just existing as a product. 
sure they're innovating in other ways but for a game that started on aviation with its whole premise originally originally just sort of dedicated to aviation as a whole maybe it's time they revisited some of those core concepts and expanded upon them as a whole now i've probably done videos like this in the past in fact i'm probably gonna have a look at my video catalog and tell you if i've done a video like this but i'm not really offering any proper solutions here i'm offering you ideas i don't want to really want to be known as the complainer i hate being negative this isn't really negative this is just why i'm changing to ground forces primarily because there is a lack of incentive for me to play realistic now so unfortunately i've now transferred all of this and, and starting to play tanks you know i'm getting to the point where i nearly have all the rank threes in the game i will slowly progress my way and and unlock all the vehicles now would i do the same for boats and helicopters that's yet to be remaining but the core principle is i'm learning about tanks more i'm, I'm getting more invested in, in gameplay with ground vehicles which means that as a whole aviation just takes a, a step back and it becomes an accessory to the game mind you many creators and fans have done that already they've taken that leap and gone well aircraft is, hasn't changed at all we're gonna go play ground forces and i understand that's where the majority of the income comes from for ground forces and i don't know i don't really have a solution there ultimately i'm probably just late to the party uh and well as a wise old sage who sits back and observes many of the changes and the battle running changes going through it makes it really impossible to sort of say what is going to happen and what isn't going to happen what i do know though is it's going to be a bit crazy the next couple of years so when war thunder hits the, the year 10 i might end up by just chilling out and going you know what i've experienced everything in the game but uh, I haven't quite experienced everything in the game yet. So there are more challenges to do. There are more things to look at. I need to go spade some of the aircraft. And, and ultimately, there is a lot more fun to be had as I revisit aircraft I haven't flown in years. And also have a look at vehicles I've never really bothered playing. But until that time comes, I'm probably going to end up by seeing you guys in Ground Forces matches from here to come. Thank you very much for watching uh, today's video. I hope it wasn't too negative. I live stream on Twitch every now and then, so go check that out in the description below. Thank you very much to the patrons and everybody else. I love your faces. Uh, thank you for almost hitting 50,000 subscribers, and uh, we'll see you next time.